Uh, my mother always loved movies. She swooned over Paul Newman and sobbed helplessly while reading a biography of Vivian Lee. And when I was nine, Tatum O'Neill won an Oscar for Paper Moon. My mother and her friend, Mrs. Krasner, let out such a sudden and inexplicable shriek of joy that it made me knock over the bowl of cereal that I was eating. She truly loved movies, so I wanted to write them. As soon as I began, I started hearing about MPTF, a place that was universally revered and loved in a business in which nobody is universally revered and loved. This was the cause for which Titans did the fundraising so that grips and makeup artists and negative cutters would always have somewhere to go. It was the heart of the Hollywood that my mother so loved, and that moved me. So I dove in and looked for ways to help. Over the course of a few decades, I've met uh, quite a few heroes at that place and more than a few angels. In 2020, as COVID was just beginning, I heard that MPTF had suddenly run short on PPE. So I sent out an email to everyone in Hollywood that I knew and money just fell out of the sky. Everyone seemed to understand that this place was the firewall. This was the place we must always defend and support. When MPTF asked me to help write for events like this, the answer is of course yes. When MPTF asked me to go on Channel 22 with Hawk Koch, the answer is an emphatic yes. And when MPTF asked me to look after six patients who had become isolated during the pandemic and needed a weekly checking in on, the answer to that was yes too. The answer for me when MTF asks is always yes, as it is for all of you, or you wouldn't be here tonight. That's what makes the place work. Three years ago, uh, my mother was diagnosed with Alzheimer's, uh, and MPF, MPTF came to her rescue. She's in Pickford House now. I thank God for that every single day. My mom doesn't know who I am anymore, and I'm pretty sure she doesn't know where she is, but she knows she is safe and she knows she is home. All the Hollywood pictures on the walls tell her so. And that, believe it or not, is a happy ending. My name is Billy Ray, and I am MPTF. It's a long story, and we probably don't have time for it all tonight. But the short version doesn't really begin to capture it all. My ex-husband, Eric, a Marine Iraq war veteran and the father of my child, Matthew, came back from deployment with the emotional scars of combat. I had to divorce him to protect myself and Matthew when Matthew was just a baby, but he and Matthew were rebuilding their relationship when Eric died by suicide right before Christmas of 2018. We didn't see it coming. We thought he was on the road to recovery. I mean, here I am at one time a grip, an editor, a graphic designer, and since 2015, a stunt woman, but most of all, a mother who is grieving with her 12-year-old son, and I needed to figure out whether he's eligible for VA survivor benefits through his dad. Single mom life trains you to be good at figuring things out, but I've got to tell you, I was stuck. I didn't know where to start. And then I found MPTF, it's Veterans Benefits Assistance Program and social worker, Naomi Rada. Talk about persistence. Naomi made calls I never would have made, pushed in ways I didn't know how to, and never once judged me for sticking around for as long as I did in a volatile marriage. In the end, we got the survivor benefits my son Matthew was entitled to, and because of that, my Matthew will be taken care of financially. Survivor benefits. I always tell Matthew we're not victims, we're survivors. So we got something right. Now Matthew sees me on TV doing a stunt on a motorcycle and brags to all of his friends, hey, that's my mom. <laughs> and I'm proud of him for growing up to be such a wonderful young man with a bright future, thanks in part to the support MPTF gave us in securing his benefits. I'm Ashley Tave, stunt woman, and I'm NPTF. Hi, I'm, I'm gonna start by saying something that I didn't actually have, it was not in, in the teleprompter. I was driving with my girlfriend to Carmel, we do that every four or five times a year when she was alive, and 
I, uh, we, we drove right by the, the hospital, which is right on Highway 101, on the way, to, on the way up to uh, Ventura. And I said, oh, there's the Mosby Mo Children's Center Hospital. I had no idea what was behind that hospital. And not until I arrived on campus did I realize what was there. And I, and, because I, 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 the, the speech kind of starts with the fact that for one minute I was shaving in front of my mirror in, in, in my bathroom, and eight days later, I woke up in a hospital, a victim of a massive stroke. I was 62 years old, and this stroke literally brought me to my knees. It ended my career and nearly ended my life. I needed to learn how to walk again and talk again and to live what some would call a normal life. After a year and a half bouncing from a few hospitals and rehabs, my daughter Kimberly spoke to me about living at MPTF. And I said to myself, well, well how do you live there? There's a hospital, maybe, do I live in the hospital? I said, no, there's a big campus. I said, what campus? I said, behind the hospital, I, which of course I did not know about. So I said to, to I said, well, the, so, I, so she called Ron Meyer, who was a partner of mine at Creative Arts Agency. And Ron Meyer, who was head of, of Universal at the time, said to uh, my daughter, go, 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 let, let's try it out, she'll be in, in three weeks. Three weeks later, I was in a room at, in the lodge at MPTF, and Martin Seidman, who was a, a greensman for a long time in the industry, was, uh, was on campus, obviously, as a resident. And he said to me one day, let's take a walk. I said, a walk? I can hardly move. He said, go away to take a walk. Literally, I started walking with Martin Seidman throughout the entire Motion Picture and Telephone campus, every single office on the campus. We would drop off flowers. And then we would go to the commons. On the way to the commons, he would get a haircut, drop off flowers to get a haircut. He would, he would pick up his cleaning, drop off flowers, he would pick up his cleaning. And lo and behold, we ended up on, on, at, the, at, the, uh, at a, uh, at right, ne right next to the King's Restaurant, a Starbucks, where I had a whole other group of friends that were not campus friends that I, that I made friends with over the years. And that was my other life. So I said, my God, this is the greatest thing that's ever happened to me. This is better, this is certainly better than working. And, and believe me, and, and, and believe me, and, and believe me, as you all know, working in the motion picture industry is all consuming to the point where literally I, divorced, I got divorced my wife because I, I never was at home. I literally worked from eight in the morning to 11 o'clock every day as an agent. And then I, and I ran two companies and then produced, what, 13 movies now. So I'm thinking to myself, this is, this, is, this is a great great and quite interesting that in fact I was able to do this. I am now in room 451. It is my home. I'm on the campus. And luckily for me, uh, Martin Seidman is a good friend of mine, somebody I will remember forever. I have great new friends on campus now. And remember one thing, I am Tony Ludwig and I am MPTF.